Good morning. It's really good afternoon. I always say good morning because I'm used to saying that was when we were in Los Angeles. It was always good morning. So good morning to everyone who is west of us. <laughs> it is noon here in central time zone. So I am Teresa Coates. I am the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and we are here with Sew Together Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining us again. We are back this week talking all about Cloud Cuddle. So this is a new product that we're going to talk all about, answer all your questions. So hopefully we're going to answer a bunch of your questions before you ask them. But I definitely want to encourage you guys today to ask questions, okay? And I will be here to help. Yeah, Get those gonna, questions to Teresa. And we're going to try to figure them out. If I don't know the answer, we're going to try some things. If you've got questions about stuff, ask away. Okay. Today is totally experimentation, um, which will make it a fun one. So if you share the video, because it's going to be so fun, you'll be entered to win. At the end, we will give away two prize packages. Um, we'll give away a kit and bag, all sorts of tchotchkes uh, for Sew Together Tuesday. We have two of those that we'll give away, one on Facebook and one on YouTube. So you'll get the tote bag, a kit, some patterns, some fun stuff, and that mug, which is fun. Mm -hmm. so. Ta -da. <laughs> Ta -da. so you too could be really happy when you finish something. Every time I finish, I'm like, yes, I did it. So today we're not actually going to work on a project. We're just going to work on the fabric and see what we can do. And I'm going to show you a whole bunch of different techniques and talk about the basics about using Cloud Cuddle, okay? So also, I want to remind you. Leanne yes. says the cloud is cutting out. The sound is cutting out. That's, that's interesting. Do uh, you want to unplug, replug? No, no I, think, I think right now that's the only note. Is everybody else having uh, a sound experience? Good sound experience? A good sound experience is what we want. Give me some thumbs up. <laughs> Can you hear us OK if I'm talking? OK. Sound is good. OK. All right. Good. Whew. It's always a little scary. Um, Okay, so today we're going to talk about the cloud cuddle. If you go to our blog, which is shannonfabrics.com slash blog, you will find a blog that is all about this show, about cloud cuddle, and you can go in there and you can download the show notes. We've talked about these before, so it's a couple pages of information. We're going to talk about a bunch of this. I would suggest that you print it out, and then you can take more notes on the back. Because <laughs> we're going to share a ton of information here, and hopefully we will cover everything that's here. If we don't. The information is on there. Download it from the blog. You'll have all this to look back at. Okay. Uh, all right. Is that everything I need to tell them at the beginning? I, I think that's our. I think that's our roundup. That's it. Okay. So cloud cuddle. What the heck is this cloud cuddle? We have not come out with a new kind of fabric in a while. So this is pretty exciting, and we have talked about um, having a double sided minky for a long time. So we used to. If you have been around Shannon Fabrics for a long time, we used to have something called Spa which was a different kind of fabric that was also double-sided. It got discontinued years ago for reasons that I'm not aware of. I'm not sure what happened, but we discontinued it. And we didn't do the double-sided for a long time. And then recently we have a new like manufacturer or whatever that is creating this cloud cuddle for us. And I will say it is different. So I have some of the old spa cuddle here. You probably can't see it very well, but it is a different. So this is the old stuff. And this is the new stuff. And let's look at all of this. So it is just a different kind of fabric. Um, it's still a knit. It's still it's still a knit, I think. Um, it is just really different. So this is this is the cloud cuddle, which I will say is a little different than the spa. So if you are familiar with the spa, it's not the same thing. Okay, so give it um give it a whole other try view. See how you like it? Start from the beginning. Start <laughs> from the beginning. Exactly. So it is double-sided. It is super soft. It is super lightweight. And it's just, um, I don't even, I mean, you can kind of. Those are all the, the this, like, these are the headers. This is all the so different. It's so fluffy. So in the uh, show notes, we talk about luscious. And it was luscious is what everybody kept calling it. We had the BAs, our brand ambassadors. So with it, and everybody kept being, it's so luscious. It's so luscious. So that's totally the word we use. I kind of want to go over some of the fabrics that we have, the different um, prints that we have, because we came out with a first like a smaller line of them, and then we've just added a bunch to it. And they are available in stores now. So if you're a shop owner, you can buy them now. And if you're a consumer, you can also buy them now, which is great. Okay, so let's kind of go over these. I'm going to show you some samples that are made with these as we go, but I kind of want to show you the fabrics just so you can get an idea on them. So come on in close and we're just going to kind of flip through the headers here. So I will say that it is a napped fabric still. 
Okay, so there is definitely a nap. If you push it backward, you can so kind of it, see it, it ruffle it up. It ruffles up. Just like regular cuddle. Flat. But the cool part is the other side has the same thing. Okay, so that is also a napped fabric. So both sides, which makes it soft on the inside and the outside, which is very, very luxurious. So we'll go through some samples. I'll show you some stuff that you can make with it that really puts this soft on the other side to use. Okay, so they're just a ton. You can see all of these too on our website. All right, so there's really some very fun variations. Like this is a super cute little kid one. And we've got the perfect one for a robe, right? Perfect. And you'll notice that the back is always white. So what I like about this is that it does have a very vibrant color. If you ruffle it up, it still doesn't show the white through there very much. Like you can see a little lightness back there, but it's not. Um, the printing goes the into printing the fabric deep. deep. Got it. So even though it's got a white background and you can see it's a lot of white, it actually doesn't show too much. So I don't think it's going to show. Okay. So the fabric is three millimeters on the front and four millimeters on the back. Okay, so it's a little thicker on the back. Look at that one, so cute. I love those little mushrooms, little hedgehog. More mushrooms, very cute. Nice fall patterns very, coming up. Very, very cute. I love these little gnomes. So if you're really weather's into gnomes. gonna change, it's gonna be sweater weather. So these are great. Soon so, again, right? Right. <laughs> so we'll talk about um, things that you can make, but sweatshirts are really kind of a thing that hoodies, that sort of thing, robes little loungewear so really comfortable bits that you want to wear around the holidays you could make matching robes for everybody in the fam some really oh, fun gnomes. Stuff. gnomes more gnomes the gnomes, gnomes are so cute okay <laughs> little trucks so this is a very common christmas christmas theme too okay oh you could make a really easy little um christmas tree skirt out of that stuff too then we have the buffalo oh, check which it is a, could be almost reversible mm -hmm. right because it would just look like snow on one side and yeah. then you could flip it over and it would be print print on the other oh that's fine put a little um what do you call that fringe along the edge would be really cute so this is the buffalo check but this is a smaller scale than the lux cuddle or the regular cuddle okay so it's a little smaller scale of the buffalo checks which is very cute this, the, um, this is crosshatch, which I have today that I'll be using and sharing with you guys. Cute little dinosaur. This is an old print that we used to have that I'm really excited to see again. I love this design. I think it's absolutely adorable. Those foxes kill me. Kill me. They're so cute. Freaking adorable. Boop. And look at this would go really nicely Boop. with this one right here. Oh, this simply taupe. Yeah. Yeah. Put those together. It's a perfect little thing. And then we've got some camo. And I've got a little sample of that one to show you as well. Cool. Okay. Is that it? I feel like I had one more. Is there three? Did yeah. I show them all? Nope. I showed them all. You did. Okay. Did I? Yes, I did. Okay, good. So you can see there's a whole variety. And that's what I like about this is that the fabric actually has a ton of um, uses. And with all of these different prints, you can find one that will actually fit the project that you're going for which I think is great. So it does not come in solids. It only comes in prints right now. And, and I say right now, and I'm like, it could be ever. I don't really know. Um, but it does come in prints with a white background. That's what it's available in. That's what they make it in. Okay. And again, cloud cuddle. All right. So let's show some examples of what you can do with this. Let's, so uh, have... let's address a couple of quick questions. Okay, sure. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's do it. Uh, easy peasy. Okay. So for starters, though, just sort of a general question uh, about Shannon Fabrics. Yes. We are a manufacturer and a wholesaler of fabrics. Correct. We sell to quilt shops we sell to and quilt fabric shop. stores. Yep. And then they sell to the consumers. So we do not have a brick and mortar store uh, and we no. do not sell online. We only sell through your local quilt shops. Yep, exactly. And you can find the shops, a lot of the shops that carry our fabric. Not all of them are listed on the website, but you can find a lot of them if you go to shannonfabrics.com. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and you can find a store locator um, or where to buy. I think it's where to buy is what you click and then it takes you to the store locator. And then you can find shops that are both online and brick and mortar stores that you can find the fabrics at. You can always call your local fabric retailer and ask them if they sell cuddle fabrics or if they have any cloud cuddle. And they might not have heard about it yet either. So 
you know, you could be doing some good in the world and letting other people know about it too. So yes, that's right. what I want. All right. What was the other question? Uh, the other one was uh, kind of jumping ahead, but I think it's a great sort of safety question right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference between pajamas and loungewear. Right. So yeah, we talked a little bit about that earlier. Is that pajamas, you are only supposed to make pajamas out of fire resistant fabrics. So we don't recommend it for using it for that way, but you can use it for loungewear, which means just hanging around the house while you're awake. You can use this stuff. Okay. So that's just the there we go of it. All right. So there is there is a difference. All right. Okay. Any anything else? I think that's good. Let's get into it. Okay. So let's show the picture of the blanket. So we have two different blankets I wanted to show you guys. One is the so simple blanket. Yep. So there's a so simple blanket. This was the first way that I thought about using it is that you could just like find the edges and it's totally fine, which you absolutely can do. You can do it one layer or two with the bound edges. There is another one. So let's show the other blanket as well, which is the frame game. And both of these patterns are our patterns. So you can find those at shannonfabrics.com. This one is the frame game pattern and actually has like a border. So it's kind of like a self binding. Well, it is very much like a self binding, but it has a little border in there. And that's that frame that's on there. Okay, so these are all made with the um, with the cloud cuddle and they're fabulous. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit. I made a little sample to share with you guys of different ways that you could make this into a blanket because really that was the first thing that I wanted to make with it was I was like, oh, this would be the easiest blanket ever and so yummy. So I thought, let me try out some ways of doing this. So I have a sample that has a whole bunch of different ways of binding and finishing a blanket. Okay. So the first way I thought is that you could put two layers together and then just sew them together like you would for a Lux throw. And then, so I sewed this together and then I top stitched here. Oh, all the way, all the way back there. Got right. It. Cause that's the way I normally do it when I do a throw. Sure. I don't particularly love it. And How did I, the corners finish. Well, I well, didn't you do didn't the corners. Do oh, <laughs> I did four different sides. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Got it. Normally you just sew all the way around the edges, turn it inside out, and then top stitch. Might be really nice to do a rounded corner thing. You could totally this. do could a rounded corner. Around so what's the what's the what's the point of having a double sided fabric if you're just gonna put wrong sides together? Well, for me it's just that it's it's just so extra yummy. Got it. It's just, it and it's totally it it's totally so is. thick and delicious. It's like, almost it really pre batted. Is. Yeah, yeah, it's because it's got the thickness behind it, so that it's just extra squishy. Um, squishy, that's a, I don't know what that <laughs> word is, but that's mine. Um, but what I don't like about doing it this way is that that because it's so thick, it leads to a really, like, kind of a, I can see a lump in here, and I don't know if you guys can see. You kind of can. So there's, like, a lump, and then it comes down because there's so much thickness here. Not a big deal, but what I would do is if I were to do it again, I wouldn't top stitch this far out. I would top stitch about an inch in. And kind of play up that that thickness as an edging rather than just kind of a weird seam allowance in there okay totally works absolutely if you're fidgety like me this will drive you crazy that the plaids don't match so <laughs> if i were to make a big blanket i would definitely use a print that didn't have you know lines to match because every once in a while look at that it's beautiful beautiful okay nailed it nailed it but then the rest <laughs> of them are like ooh, that's not yeah, not good. So you could totally do it like a throw or you could bind it, which is how the so simple is made. So it's with two pieces stuck back to back and then you just bind the edges. So I tried that and I wanted to see how it would work. So I did it with the Lux Cuddle, which is here. Okay. So I just, I didn't sew the edges together. I just sewed, did I? Maybe I did sew the edges. I did sew the edges together um, first and then I sewed the binding on. So I did a one and three quarter inches strip, sewed it with a half inch seam allowance, brought it around and stitched it down. You can see how tight this is. So when I do this, when I'm sewing this, I really have to rank it over. What, what, what's that? This is my, my Annie stiletto, which is <laughs> lovely and perfect for doing bindings. So, but you can see it's a really tight fit and you can't really feel it in here, but this is a super thick binding now. Got it. So if you're doing a binding like this, I would suggest, and we're going to try this later, a wider binding. And that's what we're going to try, try next in just a minute. But I just did this, bring it over. And you're just going to fluff and, and your And for stitches. folks who haven't been here before and heard you talk about cuddle binding, you don't have to 
you don't have to fold this under the nope. extra time. It's just stitch down half inch seam allowance. Like I said, you're just going to bring this around the raw edge, just, the raw edge. And I just zigzag that. So if we come in here, you can see that little zigzag in there. Okay. And I just zigzag right along the edge. Got it. Okay. And then you just scratch the, and then I the just fibers yeah, out. kind of scratch it up and it will totally hide that beautifully. Nice. All right. So this is this is a great way of binding it. Super easy. And the Lux Cuddle is very forgiving. So if you haven't tried binding with Lux Cuddle, I really recommend it because it is actually pretty darn easy. Um, and it's super easy to hide all of your little mistakes. OK, the other way you could do it is with the Cuddle 3. All right. So this is just with the regular Cuddle 3. I did this with a quilting applique stitch and then I did this with a zigzag. Right, let's see if okay. I can get this up a little closer. See if you can see it. You might be able to see it better from the other side too. I don't know. Because this is the side I sewed it from. Okay. It looks like a zigzag. Yeah, there's a zigzag and a and a um yeah, so this is the zigzag. I guess the other one is down here. There we go. So there's the little quilting applique stitch is what I did. Which is similar to a blanket stitch. Uh yeah. Yeah, very similar to a blanket stitch. And you can kind of see it here where it stitches and then it goes over and stitches. Okay. All right. So that is the quilting applique stitch though. And we did a we did an episode a while ago that talked about the difference. And I will say that one is better. So this again had that same issue where it was really tight to pull that over. So I end up kind of squishing a bunch of that in there to get it to come over and um, stitch it down. But it works. It kind of ends okay. up looking, uh, I noticed this earlier, it looks like big piping. It almost looks like piping on it. Yeah, this is very full and, yeah. and it's got a lot of body to it and it's nice. It's, and you can still squish it down. So don't be there. afraid to squish it when you're when you're sewing with it. Okay. So another way that you could do it because it's um, because it's two sided, you can use this like you would in other blankets that are like no sew blankets. So I thought for a second, I was like, oh, maybe I'll try that thing where you cut the fringes and then you knot the edges where you can like kind of get the two sides to come together. So that's something you see done with fleece. Sometimes they do them with fleece blankets. Right. And I thought, oh, maybe that'll work with the same sort of way. So this is not fleece, but no. any pattern that you see that calls for fleece, this would, you could substitute this in. Totally, totally. Because it has a lot of the same characteristics of being not stretchy and double-sided. So that's totally true. So I did try it with this and I tried to knot it and then I really, I didn't like the way that it looked at all. Okay, so yeah. here's just kind of an ugly little knot in there. This one here. I did one and then I quit and I was like, nope, don't like it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so then what I did, cause I had cut all of these, then I went back and I just stitched it along this edge. So if I wanted to, now I could come along and cut these even further up to the stitching line, but it just creates a little fringed edge, which let me move it so you guys can see. It's kind of cute. It's pretty cute. Yeah. It's a nice, like, nice texture. Super duper easy. Okay. So that's another way that you could finish the edge of a blanket. Does it have more stretch or less stretch than other fabrics? Like, so for, for example, comparing it to fleece or comparing it to cuddle three. I don't, I don't know. Cause I haven't, I don't use fleece. Got it. Got <laughs> I it. have access to this fabric. Why would I ever use that? Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. So, we, we, Let's I, talk about it. It doesn't so. have so this is the stretch. This is widthwise. Okay. This is lengthwise. Doesn't move at all. Okay. So widthwise, there's a little bit of give. Lengthwise, nothing. And then bias, of course, there's a bunch of stretch because bias stretches. Okay. So I left two bits open here so we can try two different things. So I want to show you how to do a hem on it because you could absolutely do a hem which because it's two-sided and nice, we could actually make it look almost like a self-binding blanket, but just one layer, which is kind of fun. So we're gonna try that first and then we'll do a little bit of binding and I'll show you that on a single layer, okay? All right, so. I, I've, got a, I've got a general question we're gonna get okay. back to. I actually think is really interesting. So the, the, the question is uh, uh, from So Crafty, uh, I'm gonna paraphrase, is this friendly to, on, for a domestic machine? And that is this is a domestic, a domestic machine. Yeah. The, the thing is that it does have a walk use the walking foot attachments. Yes. So when I say I will we'll show you, but you definitely, definitely want to use a walking foot with this. Um, I tried it on three different machines because I have them. So I tried it on all the machines that I've got. And um, I will say that it definitely needed the walking foot. Are we having an issue? Nope. Oh, okay. We definitely need the walking foot and we definitely need to release the presser foot pressure on a machine if it will let you do that. Okay. 
So, um, yeah, absolutely on the domestic. And I just threw that on the floor. Oopsie. <laughs> Oh no! You're gonna I need it, it back. Right here. Okay, great. Um, okay, so this is the double-sided basting tape that I just recently got um, by Annie. Just recently put it out, and it's actually super great. So you get two rolls in here that are like this. So there's one hidden in between there. It's harder to hard to see, but you get two rolls like this. They're an eighth of an inch wide, and they are super duper sticky. So I love this for this side sort of thing. It's just a really easy hem. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how I would, will do this. So one thing we want to do is figure out how big of a, a hem we want to do. But I don't really need to know now. I'm just going to put this right along the edge. So one thing that's different about this than regular cuddle is that we said like it's a three millimeter nap, four millimeter on the back. And, but it's a different, it's a different kind of nap. So it's not the little fibers like we have normally. And I don't really know how to explain how different it is. It is just very different. So this doesn't sit as high on top of the fibers as it normally would with cuddle. Oh, that's interesting. I think I see what you're saying. So I had an easier time with this than I did. Sometimes the tape wants to kind of float right, up on top. Right, exactly. Because like, yeah, the nap is kind of up here and it sits up here and like kind of floats around. And this one, it's a little nubbier or denser. That's what we were saying. It feels denser than um, just the regular cuddle fibers. So it is just, it is, it is a different beast. Okay. So now I want to fold this over and I'm going to show you a couple of things. So when I am working with this, when I'm doing folds on cuddle in general, I will mark how far I want it to fold to. So if I want to do a two inch, I mean a one inch hem, I'm gonna mark two inches because it's gonna fold up to that line. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark this. This is a water soluble marker, I believe it is. Yep, water soluble, water erasable from Clover. Okay, so it'll leave a nice little thin line on here and then would go away when I wash this, which is great. Okay, so there's my little sticky edge. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to flip this over to have it meet that line. Okay. And having that line really helps because then I'm like, okay, I don't have to just guess like I did down there. Just folds over, stays there beautifully. Okay. Now we can go ahead and sew that. So that's what we're going to do. All right. One of the things that we talked about, so we had the BA is the brand ambassadors um, and they did a bunch of sewing with this. And one of the things that they said is because it's so thick, it is really hard to see your thread, which is both good and bad. So we're going to sew this with the gray here. We love being able to hide stitches in the nap. Right. Until you want to find them again. So and I'm going to try <laughs> so you want to find them again. So I'm going to try a few different stitches here, mostly so we can kind of see how it ends up. So I'm going to do straight for a little bit. I'll do zigzag. We'll do serpentine because those are my favorite stitches. Okay. okay. So I'm just using the Mettler Metrocene thread, which is polyester. Sorry, I started at the wrong place. I started at okay. the wrong place. <laughs> so we're using polyester thread. I'm using the gray right now. I have fuchsia up there just waiting for me. All right, we're going to do a straight stitch right now that is a 3.0 stitch length. So it's a little bit longer than we would normally use for working with cotton, but we're using it for cuddle. And I'm just going to go ahead and stitch this just a little bit. I will say that the digital dual feed worked the best out of all of the different types of walking feet-ish things. Um, it worked really nicely. You can see it just kind of pulls it through. I don't even... Look, look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> and it really did work. The other ones didn't work that, that nicely. So the uh, digital dual feed on here works really well. So we'll do a little zigzag. Mostly I want to do this so we can see what the stitch looks like on the other side. Okay, so then let's go over and we'll change it to a serpentine. Is that my serpentine? No. Okay, so the serpentine I have here is a four and a half wide and 1.6 long. I will say that you definitely need to work with your machine, try it out, see how big you like it. This is how I like mine. But serpentines are definitely, they vary on how they turn out on different machines. Serpentine okay. stitch has a tendency to be very forgiving in cuddle sewing in totally general, does. right? Even, totally. even more forgiving maybe than the zigzag. 
Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, because you can't really notice it so much. So let's see what we, we it's can already try. not straight. So if it's not, if your right. stitches aren't straight, you it's totally fine. It, Nobody really it's notices. Too late. I want to see if there's another fancy stitch that we want to try to see what it would look like. Let's do this one. So this, um, yeah, that's the quilting applique stitch. So I do want to make it wider so that it will catch the edge a little bit better. And then I make it a little bit longer so it beads through faster. So we talked about this once before and I'm going to reiterate. So come back over here to the screen. We're going to show them this really quick. So on here with the quilting applique and make sure that you're looking at yours and trying it out too. But what I found is that the 3.0 width is how far over it goes when it grabs the fabric. This The length here, the 2.0 is how big the stitches are. It will still have three stitches in between. So that is something that you'll need to try. So it'll go stitch, 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 over, stitch, 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 over. And so what I found is that if I make it longer, these little lines get further apart. That's what happens there. All right. But it doesn't actually, it takes slightly bigger stitches, but it doesn't, I was hoping I could get those closer together with a bigger stitch in between. So I was hoping it would be like a big stitch, a big stitch, and then over, but it will do a big stitch, a big stitch, a big stitch, and then over. Got it. So try it it's on your own. It's always going to have three stitches in between. It is you always going to change that one. number. Exactly. So I'm going to lift this up. And I'm going to put this over on the edge because if I were doing this kind of stitch for real, I would want it to be on the edge. Okay. So I'm just, I'm running right down along the edge because this is what an applique stitch would be, would be just right along there. Do you need to mirror that stitch? Um, I probably should have, but I didn't. Yeah, and that's totally fine. Okay. Got it. Can't really see it. You can see a little bit of the serpentine there. There's the zigzag. Can you see the zigzag at all? Not in... It really hides in there. And then there's the straight stitch. So if you if you struggle with a straight stitch, I would say do something else. I would say the serpentine, like we were talking about, is kind of the most forgiving there. This one really hides very nicely, though. So, yeah, whichever one you want to do. So this is totally a way that you can actually just finish that edge. You could do, if you did the blanket like this, you could have your whole edge would look like this, and it would just be a nice little edge on it and then the center of it is white so it does it definitely de you could do this as a self-binding blanket with one layer got it does that make sense yeah so that's super fascinating to me all right so i realized that i was going to do this with a two i'm still going to do it with a two but we're just going to do it with one layer and see how that works out okay so i cut this two inches wide instead of one and three quarters and we're going to sew it on here one layer and i'm going to do the binding like we normally do so I'm going to stitch it onto what I consider the back of this. And then we're going to sew it around and bring it around to the front. The reason I want to do this one is to kind of reiterate how easy binding is, but also to show you how much this doesn't need to be pinned. So this last one, this last seam that we did, I kind of stuck it down with the tape so we didn't need to. Here's one of my magic pins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It the is, one, that, is, one that one that survived the machine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm just going to pin this down in a few places. If you've worked with Cuddle Much, you know it tends to be a little slippery. And this one, I can move it over, but it really sticks pretty nicely. The two layers together stick beautifully. We'll do that in just a minute. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to switch this back to a straight stitch. Right middle of the road. Three millimeters, sew with a half inch seam allowance. Okay. And I really have, yeah, just a couple of pins in here to kind of hold it in position and basically to just make sure that it's staying where I need it to. But really, if I just kind of hold this in place, it's just going to work right through. That, that seems so cooperative. It's very cooperative. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Not like some of them that definitely have a mind of their own. This one is a little, a little less. And I think a part of it is the stretch. It doesn't have as much stretch. And also, I really do feel like the nap has a big difference in it. So one of the things, this one I'm sewing um, along, this is the width of the fabric, I believe. Yeah. So this is the width of the fabric, and sewing this way is fine. 
I will say that when I sewed it with the nap, it works really nicely. When I sewed it against the nap, you can even see that it like kind of wants to argue with me as I come across. So try to work with the nap when you're sewing. So across the nap or along the nap, but don't sew against the nap. That makes sense. Okay. Got it. Okay. So More so I even than, than other yeah. prints, digital print cuddles or any of that. Exactly. Got it. Okay, so we're gonna bring this over. Okay, and I'm gonna do that um, quilting applique one because I really do like that. Is that it? Okay, I'm gonna make that up a little. Okay, so we're gonna do it again at three, three wide and two long. Okay, and I am going to flip it this time, which is that fun little thing. So if you have a baby lock, that's what this is. If it mirrors it, you see that? Flip -flop? I saw it. It's pretty great. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch along here, and I'm not going to pin it or clip it or anything. I'm just going to sew it. See what happens. Okay? Wow. So really, I want to make sure that all of my fabric is up on the table, because that's the way it works when you're sewing the cuddle. But I'm going to get the camera just... in your way. Okay, it's fine. It's working right now, so it's okay. I'm not struggling. Not at all. So, yeah, just going to hold it along here. So, this is way, way easier. Okay. I'm just going to get that pulled over. This is the two millimeter or two inch, sorry, two inch binding that I did. And this is coming around that half inch there really nicely. And I'm not having to fight it as much as I did when I cut it at one and three quarter. So I'll say the fluff of this is um, enough that would kind of encourage that. You could also make a smaller seam allowance, but I actually really like this kind of big binding. I think it looks really pretty on here. Okay. I'm really digging your color choice too, honestly. I Thanks. mean, the, the blue and gold thing is, is lovely. I was just hearkening back to my high school days. When <laughs> oh yeah, was that your team? Was that your team colors? <laughs> it were, that was the school colors. Nice. But I thought it looked really nice, so I do like it. So there we go. All right, that's how that looks, and that is much flatter than this one. You got see it. That? Yep. So you can see a big difference. This is because this got all kind of squished in here because of that extra or that less of a quarter of an inch in the binding. So to get a smoother, easier binding, I would suggest making it a little wider. Okay. okay. Two two different looks, basically the same ease of construction. Yep, exactly. Okay. So, and then this is just one layer, obviously, too. So it's a little bit easier in that way. So this is totally a way that you could absolutely bind the entire blanket just like this. One side's going to look like this. One side's going to look like this. Okay. Great. So you could do it one layer or two, depending on what you want. All right. So there's a bunch. All right, let's come back around. <laughs> and then we can go over to some pictures that we can talk about some more stuff. So we've got blankets. What, what? Can we talk about cutting? Oh, yes. Let's talk about cutting in a minute. We're going to okay. talk. Let's show some oh, examples okay, great. of some clothing. So that's what I want to show is some, some things that you could make with this. And then we'll talk about how to cut it and how to sew it that way. So these are a few different things that you can make. So hoodies are a great idea. The fabric is so soft and yummy that you want to add some stabilizing features. Those patterns are good. So like these have little hoods and front pockets and they work really well with this sort of fabric because it'll give it a little extra weight to hold it in place. So these are um, included the patterns up there and there's a bunch of patterns that are included on our show notes as well. All right, so let's see a different one. So this is a bunch of like some kids loungewear and um, some little zip ups there. You can make little hoodies with this. It's super cute. Oh, look at that little look guy. At that He's kiddo. killing me with this cuteness. Kill the so toes. So cute. The little hooves are like the cutest thing ever. I love them. I love them. So you can totally do all sorts of things depending on the fabric that you choose. Like this cloud, the cloud cuddle cow, just it kind of calls out for some sort of costume like that. It's just absolutely adorable. So you can make all sorts of garments with it. So the first thing that I thought of was a robe. And we've had a few people who have said, like with the Lux Cuddle robes, they're like, oh, isn't that kind of like scratchy on the inside? And we're like, no, 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 it's super smooth. Like Lux Cuddle is nice on the back. It's great. I will say a robe out of Cloud Cuddle, you will just live in it from there on out. <laughs> like, Can we go talk amazing. about it? Yeah. Can so you this show is, us? <laughs> this is the one that I made, um, that I made it with the, oh shoot, now I'm going to forget it. Sweet Flowers, I think was the name of the, the uh, Cloud Cuddle. 
and this is Lux Cuddle Glacier in our color of the year, which is cedar wood. Okay, so I just made this the same way that we make all of the robes. And just look at that yummy inside. Oh, yeah. It's I tried this so on good. too, and she almost had to pry it off of me. Yeah, it's so I good. I mean, didn't like, give it back. It in the sleeves. Oh, my gosh. It's so nice. It's so nice. So. <laughs> and lightweight, right? It's not, you don't have to add oh, that extra light, the, the lining super layer light. in. It, it's so, so it simple. really is. So, even though, like, I'm saying, like, well, my first thing was just a robe, but really, like, the robe is amazing. So, make a robe out of it for sure. But you can also make things like those garments, which is great. You can also make some like fancier garments. So let's talk about sewing it for clothing. Okay, because with a blanket, you're just going to square it up. It's pretty darn easy. Still cut one layer at a time if you can. Um, I'm going to throw my, <laughs> that is the most Frankenstein blanket I've ever made, I think. Okay, <laughs> it's <pretty> hilarious. <laughs> but now I've got a sample that I can show everyone. So one of the things about the fabric and I just have a little hunk for us to play with today, is that it's super duper floppy. Like it's just really squishy and yummy and I like it a lot, okay? Because it really does squish down. So it's great for things like the little hoodies and the, um, the bomber jackets, that sort of thing. So when we're working with it, one of the things that we need to do is we need to like cut out the pattern pieces. Right. So if we're making garments, especially with a blanket, it's just a big square, but or strips. But with the garments, you're going to actually have shaped pattern pieces. So normally, if we're sewing garments, a lot of times people want to pin them down. And we've talked about it with cuddle. A lot of times we just trace around it, which you absolutely can do here. If you pin it down, what happens? If you pin it, I'll show you. So if we pin it, so if I were to pin this little piece on here, it starts to really tweak with the actual like how the pattern is. Does that make sense? Like how it lays? Oh, yeah, got it. So you it. start to get like a little wobbliness in here. So one of the things that you can do is use pattern weights. And one of our brand ambassadors, her name is Bianca Springer, and she is Thanks I Made Them. And she does these cute little pattern weights. So I talked with her. I'm this up just a little bit so I can get the whole thing on there. Um, I talked with her about making special pattern weights for Sew Together Tuesday. So guess what? We have them, and I'm very excited about this. So you can get them, and if you order the uh, pattern weights from her before the end of the month, <laughs> and you use the discount <laughs> code, she'll throw in one of these guys and swap out one of your other ones. So you get eight of the pattern weights, and one of them will include the Sew Together Tuesday one, which is super fun. So we're going to use that one today, too. Okay, The pattern weights work really well because it just holds it flat. So you don't get any distortion. So if you look at this, it's just totally flat which Got is what it. you want, okay? You want it to be flat. So if it were that I wanted to cut this with scissors, so down at the bottom here, I'm gonna need to cut this with scissors because it's a little wonky because it's a pocket, okay? I can trace it. I can also just cut it with the pattern weights will hold this. So if you don't have pattern weights, your pattern paper will move, but with them, they're really, it's fabulous. And I will say one of the weird things about cutting this stuff is there's zero resistance. So there have been a few times that I had to check to make sure that it actually cut because I couldn't even Whoa. feel it like that it was cutting. It was very weird. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now I'll take my little pattern weights off. They're so cute. Okay. Now I can use my scissors. These are the um, Kai's. They have my name on them. Those are monsters. They are. I love them. These are, <laughs> <laughs> these are the 7280s. These are the longer ones. The 7250s are a little bit shorter, but you want to get the SE version, which is the serrated. So they are micro serrated and they are lovely. All right. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to show you how those cut. So the two methods, rotary cutter, micro serrated scissors, not your, your normal, your normal suggestion is to use the OFA SAC-1. Right. And right? you don't want to do that this time. If I have one here, here's one. So normally when we're cutting it, I had a piece of Lux Cuddle. Here it is. So I want to show you the difference. So this is Lux Cuddle, which is normally what I use with this blade because we're just cutting the backing here. So I can run this along the backing and cut it. This one, there is no backing to cut. The Got backing it. is stuck in there. So I can't get to it. So this doesn't really. Doesn't get you anywhere. It really doesn't help. Okay. Because I'm having to cut through a lot more. When I'm using it with the Lux Cuddle, I'm literally just cutting through the backing. So it's just a tiny little layer of fabric that I'm cutting through. 
with the cloud cutter, I have to try to cut through the whole thing. I might as well use the rotary cutter or scissors. Okay, you can see this is the thing is it seems like it made no mess, right? So I love this. So when I you cut it, that. yeah, it seems very unmessy, which is fabulous. I will tell you, it will definitely make some mess. So make sure that you are still cleaning this off before you start sewing with it because you don't want to take all of this to your sewing machine. Okay. Got it. So that's important that you still like, so it's less messy when you cut it out, but make sure you throw it in the dryer, toss it around for a few minutes, wet washcloth, get rid of all of this. Okay. We can see can how you, easy Can you that repeat is. that? That's a great tip. I know it's uh, maybe some folks have heard it before, but there are some new folks here uh, that washing or that drying yes. instruction. So in, well, you can do the vacuum too, but when you're done, shake it off, throw it in the dryer, wet washcloth, damp washcloth, let it tumble around in no heat or low heat for just a couple of minutes. And then you'll clean out your lint trap and all of this stuff will be in your lint trap. Okay. So I generally just vacuum, which is what I'm going to do. Are you going to mute me? I'm going to. Yeah, okay. everybody ready? We're going to mute okay. the vacuum We're cleaner. Three, two, one, go. There we go. So now easy peasy, all cleaned up, can totally easily sew with this stuff. All right. So very, very simple. Because this is kind of floppy, there are definitely some things that we want to do. So one of the things that the brand ambassadors found is that stabilizing parts like this pocket where it sews onto the jacket, for instance, you might want to use something like this um, tape, which we've used before. We used this when we made the toaster sweater. Um, up at, uh, yeah, Quilting Mayhem. I was like, I think that's where I got this. Yeah, Quilting Mayhem. Look at that. There it is. So you too can get it there. Um, <laughs> so this is Knit Stay Tape. So it's a very thin, fusible little interfacing strip. It's a half inch wide. You would basically just cut it. You're going to iron that onto you're the area that you're it. You are. You're just going to iron it on. Totally fine. Iron that baby. You would iron it onto this side, onto the wrong side. Okay. And then that's going to give you some stability and also some structure when you're working with it. So if you're doing things like pockets, your shoulder seams, that sort of thing could really help by using a stay tape just to give it a little bit of extra um, for lack of a better word. Okay. So all of these notions are listed in our show notes as well. So you mentioned you that toaster remember. sweater. I bet that pattern would be great. I think it would be. I really want to try it. So I haven't tried it yet. My only worry is that the um, the neckline is kind of like a boat neckline. So like it's a funnel is what it is. It's a funnel collar. So it does have to stretch over your head. And I'm not sure if it would stretch. Oh, I gotcha. Way. So without stretching, maybe maybe you'd have to do something like a slip. You could do like a zip a, up the front. Zip up, zip yeah. Okay. So there are some very cute ones. So let's show the other garment ones that we have, Jeremy. You want to throw those up there. We have a couple of other, um, like a bomber jacket. So this is Bianca and um, the maker of our lovely pattern weights and thinks I made them. So she made this really cute bomber jacket with the cross hatch, which is what I was showing you for that blanket. Okay, super duper cute. And this uses that zipper up the front to give it some flexibility. And she loved it. So she, th yeah, I remember she told me that she was going to make this one as a trial and then she made it and she loved it. So she decided that she was just going to wear it. Um, so it turned out great. So this one, and then we have, um, and then this is the pattern. And then we have this one that Denise made, which is the same sort of thing. It also has a little front zipper to get over your head. And then she combined this as well as the other one with rib knit. So rib knits, you can see that's the gray solid in this one. And it was the blue solid in Bianca's bomber jacket. That is a rib knit fabric. So it is a little bit harder to find. So I did find it for you guys. It's Modern Domestic up in Portland carries these colors, which will go really nicely with the colors of Cloud Cuddle we have. So if you're interested in making a garment, like I said, the bomber jacket, the hoodie, something like this, which I think might be a green pepper patterns, I think. Um, there's a few different like over the over the head hoodie sort of things that you can make that are really great. So you want something like this rib knit. And like I said, it can be sort of hard to find. So I tried to source it for you guys. Um, it'll go really nicely with the cloud cuddle to make yummy little tops. Okay, so super duper easy. And you'll want to make sure and find all of that good stuff. All right. So then let's take the picture off. 
I'm going to come back over here. There we go. Oh, we got another one. Oh, so we do have a few more little ones that we you can make. So this one is some little easy washcloths that are just surged around the edge. A little swaddler that is um, really super simple. It's basically like a long piece, kind of like a T, and it wraps up around the baby. And a cute little camo hoodie. I told you what we had to show you something with that, that camo, which is really cute. So there's a ton of different things that you can do with it that actually works really well. So um, there was something else I wanted to show you guys. Oh, so the little washcloths. That's what it was. Because these are actually really great. So I made little ones because I thought they would be really good for like facial wipes, basically. Um, so like if you're cleaning your face at night, like they're really nice and soft. Like makeup remover Like a makeup things. remover sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Just like little, little guys. So this is a great thing to do with scraps. Okay. So I did a couple of them. So one, this one is just, I cut the edges. Okay, didn't get all the mess off, but you totally could. And then you could actually leave that raw. So this, once that initial shed is done, just like with regular cuddle, that once that is over, it isn't going to keep shedding. Okay, so that edge is totally fine by itself. It can be raw. I can't really do anything with it. All right, so you could absolutely leave it like this. Be lazy if you want to. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> you can also surge it. So I took it to my serger. Oh, that was a just question from around earlier. The edge. This is good. Surging is good. Surging is fine. Um, I'm not great at rounded corners. You guys can see that, but I just search the edges. Totally fine. Okay, easy little makeup wipe sort of thing. All right. Then I decided I was going to try it on the sewing machine and see if I could get like an overlock stitch to work or a zigzag. And what I found is that it wants to really, so like this is actually a corner, but it got sucked in so hard when I was sewing it that it really, yeah, you can see this just like pulled really, oh. really hard. Do you see that? Yeah, it's, it's so kind of, it kind of collapsed. It squished it because it, it wouldn't move through the machine. So this is when I didn't have the, I was using the L9, I didn't have the AccuFlex, I think it's called, which is their walking foot mechanism. I didn't have it engaged. So it was just trying to sit underneath the foot and it couldn't grab it and bring it through. So if you're using just a, a regular sewing machine and you're trying to use a walking foot, um, definitely do it. Engage the AccuFeed or AccuFlex. And, um, but the other thing would be to keep tails. So normally how you like have the tails and you kind of pull it and bring it through. I would definitely recommend that for just kind of getting it to feed through. It wanted to stick on me and that was a little bit frustrating. Presser foot so, pressure? Presser foot pressure changes too. So I found that on the Bernina, I had to drop it all the way down to a 15 to get it to feed through the machine very well. And on the Elna, I dropped it down to the lowest as well. The baby lock, it just seemed to go through it just fine. It was great. So mm -hmm. <laughs> she performed very well in the test. Um, it really did just like sail through. I wanted to show you guys too, one other thing. Do we have other questions in there as well? Um, I, think we're, I think we're pretty good right now. We're doing good. Okay. Yeah. I want to show. So one of the things that the, the BA has talked about, but what they really liked about it was how easily it sewed through. So we're going to pretend that I am adding my little pocket to the side of my shirt. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this edge off. And I'm going to clean up my mess just a little bit. So on lengthwise we always have less mess because it doesn't cut so much of the nap it's on the widthwise cuts that you'll have more mess just fyi okay so i'm gonna go ahead and put this on here one of the things that the bas had really said is that it doesn't it doesn't slip so look at like it doesn't oh wow it's, it doesn't I, move I'm use this word again it seems very cooperative it's very cooperative <laughs> okay so i'm just gonna go ahead and i'm gonna pin it because i want the pocket to stay where i put the pocket so I'm going to pin it there, and we're going to sew in between. We'll show you how easy that is to stitch it. So I'm going to go back over to a straight stitch, and we're just going to sew it. Okay. So again, we're lengthening the stitch just like we would for regular cuddle. Lengthen it up to a 3.0 stitch length, a little longer if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and stick that under, half inch seam allowance, all that good stuff. Okay. And the back stitch. Oh. Oh, let's, before we do that, I'm going to change the thread because I wanted to show that. There was two things I wanted to show you guys. One is how to take the stitches out, remember? Oh, right. We were going to talk about that. So should you mess up and have to take out stitches, 
I can show you a little bit that will help. And one of them is to use a different color thread. Because cuddle, Cloud Cuddle is so thick and so yummy, it really hides the thread in there. Okay, I didn't talk about it there when I did it, but um, you should always cut your thread here, then take your thread out of your needle here, okay, so you're not running it backwards through your um, tension disc, and then put your presser foot down when you actually thread it. I think that this one has the threader works, but I'm just gonna thread it. Took me to it. Oh. Getting wrapped up in my gray thread over there. We don't have an iron fired up to add the stay stitch or the stay tape. I do not. So we're we're skipping that step, but it it just adds but some you know some really nice work. body and some structure to some spots if you need it, and exactly. it it works really well, and it's totally fine to iron it onto this. Yep, Cloud and cuddle. some of the, um, I think it was Ager that she was saying that when she did it, she just ironed it, like she ironed her seams open and it totally worked and it was fine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to sew this little seam. I've never seen you not use pins like this before. Yeah, and look, at it doesn't even move. Isn't that crazy? Okay, so you can see it just sews super nice and easy. I was like, oh my gosh, did it not sew at all? But it did. I just have a long tail. <laughs> okay. So the interesting thing is that when we look at this, I sew that you saw and that's fuchsia thread and I don't know where. Where'd it go? It's in there somewhere. Okay. So if I do this on this side, you can't tell that at all. You can't see that there's any kind of different colored thread in there. So you really don't have to match them at all. But what that means is that if I have to come back here and I have to take out stitches, I can actually see them to take out the stitches. Okay, so if I were to try from this side where it's white, if I were to try to get in there and actually find those stitches to try to pop them underneath, it gets a little harder because they're harder. Yeah. Yeah. It's very hard to see. And especially if you're middle-aged like me. Okay. So using a brighter thread when you're sewing will actually help you in that you can see it in case you have to take it out and doesn't hurt at all when you're sewing with it. Okay. The other thing is that the, you can actually press these seams open. Look how nicely that flips open. So when we've used cuddle for other things, a lot of times the these you can't press them open. You can't even get them to stay open at all. They just whoop, flop back. And this has more body and that it will actually do this and stay open. So garments are really super easy with this. All right. So hopefully that helped give some information. Yeah, okay. I think we got that. That's great. Okay. So I think that was everything. I want to. I want to scroll back. I'm gonna just gonna okay. look right there for a second. I want to scroll back. There was a question I thought okay. that I wanted to take out my little discuss. stitches. I'm gonna reach over and grab <laughs> my paper. We'll make sure we caught everything that I wanted to tell you guys. Oh, oh, and, oh, oh go okay. ahead. Yep. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> how would you, if you were going to use the self-finding blanket method with just this, this obviously this two double-sided fabric, how yes. would you finish the corners? The same way that you would for a self-finding blanket. So in a self-finding blanket, let me see. Are we ready for some experimenting, you guys? I love a good experiment. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this off. And I'm going to pretend... This is my corner of the self-binding blanket, right? Yep. So we're just this gonna walk through right there. that one right there, that nice square corner, because that's what we always want to start with, right? So I'm gonna do oops, one and a half. If you don't know what I'm doing, there is a few tutorials that I've done about this. So we're gonna mark our seam allowance, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark the 45. That ruler has the 45 on it, so you're right lining here. that up. Yep, with the line that I just drew. Got it. Okay, so there's my little corner. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip this. Flip that corner. I'm going to pin it over here. 
come back and sew it. You can just stay on that side for a oh, sec. Okay. We'll Sorry. That. That's okay. See if I can get a shot. I'm going to come around. Sorry, guys. Not trying to make you sick. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy how easy it sews. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is once, a, it, once it catches, it just like are, goes. Are we calling this a beginner fabric? I think it's a great beginner fabric. And honestly, if you had um, kids who were wanting to sew, who were, you know, like 10, 12, want to make some PJ bottoms, like, yeah, they'd be great. Like those, you know, those super easy elastic waist pants that you want to run around some in. Some sweaty, all the time. sweaty, some, like, sweaty some, sort of some, stuff. Some yeah. loungewear stuff. Gotcha. Okay. So. I just clipped the corner, clipped the the seam allowance off, flip the corner inside, pop that corner out. So this is how we would do the self binding. Yeah. So like I oh said, gosh, if, it's really ridiculously so like I said, if, easy. And then you're just top stitching. And again, then I'm just going to top that's stitch with that. this probably a serpentine stitch or whatever. Yep. And you're done. Yeah. yeah. So that's like that's all I would do for it. I really, yeah. Ta da! Any big deal? I'm just going to make a tiny little self binding blanket corner. All right. Are there anything else that we want to tell them? Is there anything else we need to we need to give them besides prizes? No, I think we should do that. All right, let's see who is going to win. Hey, is everybody today? cool? Everybody's happy? You learned some stuff. You're going to go buy a bunch of cloud cuddle. Yeah. Try it out. I think do that's it. what's going to happen. And then make sure that you have joined us on the I Love Cuddle page because if you have joined us there, you can share your projects, and that's really what I want is to see what you made with it. So you can go ahead and you can tag me in that group, and I love it when people do that and show me things that they've made. So happy to have you do that. All right. So we're going to show this and then we should have winners. Okay. So good that. That is totally how that would work. And that's even with the fuchsia on the top still. Is it which, you know, I would somewhere? probably, oh, yeah. Yeah, I would probably put this as white if I were doing it for realsies. Um, but this is super cute. Like that binding. And then because it's extra thick right there, it's really yummy. Like it actually does sort of like a binding. Um, lovely. Absolutely lovely. You can do all sorts of ways of binding this. Okay. Do we have winners? Let's do it. All right. We have uh, Delmery Snodgrass from YouTube and mm -hmm. Gloria Bor Borgo on Facebook. Fabulous. So if you will email us at info at shannonfabrics.com and send us your mailing address and your phone number, we will send you a prize package that includes the tote bag, a kit, the mug, and some fun little patterns and tip sheets and all that sort of stuff so that you can work on your own cuddle projects. All right. So thank you very much for joining me. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments. We will answer them and we will continue to showcase some of these projects over on the I Love Cuddle page just because it is so exciting to have this new fabric with all of these different opportunities and ways to use it. I'm very excited to, to play some more with it. So having made my Frankenstein blanket and the robe, I think I need to try some more stuff. So I'm excited about it. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back next week. We'll be doing a cuddle flag quilt just in time for all of the flag holidays. So I'm looking forward to that. It will be a fun project. It'll be great for taking on some picnics this summer, that sort of thing. Join us next Tuesday. We'll be here. Same time. Same station. Okay. Until then, happy sewing. Happy sewing. <laughs>